Hey guys, there's Optech here. What's up? But uh, first off, I do want to get started and say sorry for not making a video in a long time. I've been really busy as a senior in high school, but I'm trying to start making videos again. I just I start making videos and I stop. I start making videos and I stop. I can't be consistent, and I'm gonna start trying to be consistent. But today we're gonna be looking at a gun that I'm working on. It's a, a customer gun that uh, the customer sent me this gun, and um, he sent me. A couple times actually, because the little bits and things have gone wrong. It is an elite force gun, which means it's airy, so it's got it's already got its own you know handful of problems already stock. But this time it was a very interesting upgrade, and this time it's going to last for a extremely long time. It's never going to break down. But let's actually talk about what's inside and what I did, and we'll go over the tech bench to do that. So here it is, the Elite Force M4 that I've worked on several times. Now, I know you guys are probably asking, hey, why has he worked on this several times? You know, if he's done a good job, it shouldn't break down. And you're correct, it shouldn't break down. Uh, however, Ares, which is Elite Force, the OEM of Elite Force, has all these little problems. And if you watch the first video that I made of this gun, the one where that was actually showing off the build, and you know, it was, for, it was basically a video for the customer to see that his, that his gun is working just fine. You could... At, towards the end of the video, I said that you know the front of the gearbox is starting to crack. The Ares gearbox shells are not that good, especially the version 2 ones. They're very thin up top to accommodate for their thin receivers and all kinds of other little stuff. And they're just made out of bad material, so they do break over time. It was an M120 spring that was running on at about 35 RPS at the time. And it was sore boat, it was radius, so it was, it was everything I could do to prolong the life of that gearbox shell, I did. However time just eventually wore it down. So I've replaced it with a Lonex gearbox shell and if you know anything about Ares guns and Elite Force guns you know that it is very difficult to put a Tokyo Marui spec version 2 gearbox into an Ares gun because they just don't fit well. So I'm going to tell you guys how I modified it to fit and what all I had to do and how it all turned out. So let's take a look. So here's the Lonex shell modified to fit into the Elite Force M4. Now, I didn't have to do a whole lot, actually. I only had to do two things. However, I did have to sacrifice the existence of the rear pin in the receiver just because it wouldn't line up with the hole. And I didn't really feel like drilling it to actually get it to fit. In addition, it just really wouldn't matter because those rear pins don't really matter a whole lot. So, I got this pin to fit. I got this to match up as well as I could. I got this to match up, and I got this to match up. So, we're going to talk about here and here and what all I had to do to actually get that to fit. Much glare, very wow. So to start off, I actually had to modify the top of the gearbox shell, which is almost always a no-no when it comes down to teching and modifying gearbox shells, especially version 2s due to their inherent weakness. However, it had to be done to fit into this gun. Now this modification helps it actually fit into the upper receiver. And what I had to do is I had to take the gearbox completely apart after I found the issue and clean it of all those parts and just basically I had the shell left. Screwed it down together and took it downstairs to my garage and basically sanded the top portion of it down until it would fit into the lower receiver. Now the portion I actually shaved down was not anything that was super, you know, integ like super integral to the design of the gearbox shell. I could shave it down if I wanted to. It's this little lip right here. And if you can see it, if it would stop glaring, then that's really all I shaved down. It's not a whole lot and it doesn't do much to add to the strength of the shell. However, we are still removing material that, you know, we're not adding a circle or anything, so we're not really decreasing stress. We're technically adding just a little bit. However, this little bit is, you know, completely negligible just because of where it's placed at and that this does have AOE correction, so it does have that bumper there. And I did actually use a faucet wash. I didn't use Sorbo this time just because faucet wash is much better, for, especially for your high-speed builds. The gearbox shell is obviously radius, so that is no problem. But this is just something you have to do. You have to shave down um, version 2 gearboxes that have this you know, extended lip up top. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why Linux does it. I've seen some gearbox shells that don't have it, like GNG and JG. Sometimes they don't have it. However, this one did have it, so like I said, I did have to shave it down to fit. And it barely fits. I shaved down you know, the, little, the, the, the least amount I had to to actually get it to fit. So I did do the best I absolutely could. And this is how it came out, and it did come out just fine. So let's take a look at the last part. The last modification I had to perform to get this gearbox shell to fit into the Elite Force lower receiver was I had to actually add shims to the back here of the gearbox shell where the spring goes in, because if I didn't, this would pull back when I screwed it in. The gearbox shell would pull back in the receiver, and it would cause the gearbox to actually be up this way instead of perfectly straight. 
So if I didn't do this modification, it wouldn't feed, the air nozzle would probably break. In addition, it probably wouldn't fit into the upper receiver because it was at such a sharp angle. So I did have to shim it back. That was probably the longest thing that I actually took because I have, where I'm a perfectionist, I had to do it the best way I possibly could. And I used a shim similar to this thickness and actually shaved it down with a Dremel, made sure to where it fit absolutely perfectly. And this gearbox shell is laser straight inside this receiver. So there's absolutely no problem. In addition, it's actually glued down to the lower receiver where it would touch the gearbox shell. So there's no problem there. It won't come apart while shooting. And the buffer tube screw from the buffer tube to the spring guide is installed so there isn't a problem there that that shim is not going anywhere so those are the modifications i had to perform to get this gearbox shell to fit into this aries receiver and even still it is very very tight in the upper receiver it actually splits the upper receiver just a little bit so that you can see underneath and it looks a little wider however it doesn't really you know degrade the performance or overall looks for the most part it still looks just fine and functions just fine However, I couldn't do anything to actually fix that. I'd have to shave down the upper receiver insides, and that's just, it, it would become weaker, thinner, and it wouldn't really be worth it overall. So I left it as is. It isn't, like, like I said, it's not too thick, and I can show it on camera later on. However, the insides of the gearbox shell haven't really changed. The same stats as before, SHS 13 to 1 gears, you know, SHS bushings, SHS piston full stroke on a good size cylinder, M120 spring, JG piston head, ZCI balance motor, Zardchar SC MOSFET, one of, the, one of his first release models, which are great, by the way. And uh, that's really about it. Now, going from Aries to Tokyo Mirror spec, you have to change a few things. Things we had to change was an SHS trigger contact, so we had to get some of those. We had to get a actual, you know, trigger that would work in a uh, Tokyo Mirror spec gun, as Aries triggers are completely different because they're micro-switch triggers. We had to get a uh, Tokyo Marui selector plate, a spring guide that was Tokyo Marui style, and I believe that's about it, actually. That's all we had to do. It wasn't really a whole lot, but it was enough to kind of, you know, be annoying. Other than the gearbox inside, other than the gearbox internals, we have a Lonex hop-up chamber with, I think it is an SHS 6.04 barrel. I, uh, the customer wasn't really sure on the brand or the diameter. And uh, if you did tell me, I really can't remember, but it is a pretty nice barrel. I did polish it up and recrown it, so it does look just fine. I have a Lonex 70D bucking in it, and it's flat hops. The whole hop opinion is fine-tuned. It gets a fantastic air seal, and this gun works perfect for close quarters. So this video can serve as proof that you can modify Elite Force and, by extension, Umarex guns to fit Tokyo Marui style parts. It's just a matter of a little bit of effort. This is actually the second time I've done this where I've replaced the gearbox shell and the hop-up unit and a Elite Force gun with Lonex parts. I actually did it with a G36 a while back and that was a pain in the butt, but it turned out beautifully. So this is the second gun I've done it to, like I said before, so it can be done on their G36 and it can be done on their M4. It just takes a little bit of work, a little bit of time, and a little bit of patience, well more like a lot. However, with these modifications, you are going to lose a little bit of features. Mainly you're going to lose your charging handle. I could not shave down the gearbox shell anymore. I wasn't going to compromise any more strength just to get this charging handle to work. It just unfortunately wasn't happening and I shaved down as little as I could and I tried to do everything I could to get this charging handle to work but I can't and it can pull out as a result. However, you can still open up your open up your chamber by sliding it open and you can adjust your hop up right there and just slide it back when you're done. I know it can be a pain not to have a charging handle, but this is literally what it takes just to get a Lonex gearbox shell into an Elite Force gun. Hence, one of the reasons why I don't really like Elite Force guns. Yes, they are kind of cool and their actuals are kind of cool. They're just not worth it in the long run. But, like I said, it still can be done. You're just going to have to sacrifice a little bit. So that's the thing that I got sacrificed there was this. But that's it, really. Um, further you know, recommendations in the future, I would definitely recommend we change this grip out eventually. I all techs hate these Magpul grips with a passion because they always throw off motor grip alignment and motor alignment, just all that stuff in general, and it's just a pain to work with. And it makes your gun sound a little grindy, a little bit rubby, even though the shimming is still as perfect as it can get. It's annoying because you don't have that perfect sound that a lot of techs like. I actually build all my guns to sound like they're perfectly shimmed, even though all my guns are perfectly shimmed. Some sound more perfect than others due to motor like grip design and that kind of stuff and alignment. But I always try to get perfect motor alignment, and that does require to sacrifice you know fancy grips every now and again. But like I said, I would replace this grip 
you know, whenever you really feel like it. I just, it's something that I would personally do. Anyway, we can hear how it sounds. You can hear what I'm talking about when I say that it sounds a little bit of zippy, a little bit of, of rubbing there, but that is still perfectly shimmed just due to the grip alignment. So here's again. Pretty instant trigger response, actually. And full auto. With a stronger 11.1 volt LiPo, you would get a little bit faster. This is a very low discharge 11.1 volt LiPo. This is actually the exact same battery that the customer will be using in his gun. It's just mine, he owns one too. So I just figured I'd use it for this video, considering that's what he'll be getting. But trigger response once again. And it gets quite a bit of overspin. However, it stops just right where it should, around two, three teeth still back, so that you can't get nearly instantaneous trigger response. A weird issue I was having with this gun was that every single time it would shoot, it would cycle, and then it would drop a BB out. And that's just a weird issue that, you know, has a lot of ways to actually remedy it. How I remedied, remedied it before was by installing a stiffer bucking, which also upped the FPS, by the way. That was a while back, though, the first time I built this gun. This time, it still happened, even with that same bucking. So it wore down, and so I ordered a Lonex 70D bucking to actually get in this to work. And it still happened when I installed that Lonex 70D bucking. I fine-tuned the hop-up, I sealed it, I did everything I could to prevent it from doing that. So I looked around a little bit, and I noticed that whenever the gun would fire, the air nozzle would be all the way forward as an ending position. So what I did to remedy this was I put a sector delay chip on the sector gear, and what this does is that instead of it resetting all the way forward, it resets about medium way because that's where it rests in its cycle. So that's how I fixed it. And now no more BBs are all at the end of the barrel on semi or on full auto. And we didn't lose any FPS, so all we've done is increase feeding and make it more reliable of a, of a shooter. So let's go chrono this thing and see how fast and hard it's hitting. All right, so I'm outside right now. We're gonna chrono it and see how hard it's hitting and test its RPM. So here we go. So as you can see, it's getting anywhere between 318 to 322 FPS. This is with 0 0.20 gram BBs. So now let's chrono it. With uh, that's that's actually let's chrono the RPM. 1500 RPM and 325 FPS. This would get faster on a stronger than one volt battery that is more charged. This being a buffer tube lipo battery, like I said, it would get faster, but it's not because it's too small. But that'll do it for this gun. I consider it a successful build. See you guys later.